Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your other than O'Shorty, and today, one of two reviews this week from my own personal poll list, Into the Unbeing. Great name for a title, but I feel it needs to be said that just because it's on my poll list does not mean it's good. Um, I don't want to be like an arbiter of good taste here. If you want proof of this, and I can tell you want proof, I can hear you thinking it. You want proof. I happen to really like both of the Roadhouse movies. Both of them. And, yeah, I grew up when the first one was out. I really like Swayze. If you've not seen Two on Food Factory, then Julian, I might go check that out as well. The fact that Jake Hall's first big movie that I'm aware of also had Patrick Swayze in. I kind of like that, plus it's fun. I mean, the second one has Conor McGregor in, who is not an actor, and I mean that as an insult. But I still really like them, in my own way. So, that being said, me liking it, me putting my polish, does not make this a good comic book. The fact that Hayden Sherman's doing the artwork is what makes it a good comic book. He's fantastic. He's amazing. I like who works against him. Uh, he's done a lot of stuff that I really, really like. Most recently, um, stuff that's really stood out to me has been his work with Detective Comics in the back matter, doing the Two Face stuff, um, and some of his layouts in there are going to come back to this review later on. But first off, it's worth pointing out he's doing his own colouring as well, and that's a big deal because it means everything is done to his exact specifications, and this is good because it also shows a really good working relationship with the writer of it, Zach Thompson. And very early on, we get this textual description of red leaf trees and red flames on a building. And that could have been just very easy to put on the page. But he did the colouring really spectacularly, so there were different reds, but tied them together with literally a bird on fire flying above to move the action across. And it is just a beautiful bit of comic book art. It shows an absolute love of the form. Um, I will give a little bit of criticism before getting to more things he does really, really well. There's a point where I think two or three panels where I think it looks like he's done artwork that's supposed to be like slightly further away from your POV, but they've had to be blown up to fill the space required by the story. And it's a production issue more than an art criticism, because it looks like you can kind of see that they're slightly out of focus, like they're not supposed to be that big. I know it isn't just because he's zoomed in or something close, because like the next page over, we get a genuinely cool close-up of somebody and actually get to see the actual thickness of the lines and the heaviness of the inks to uh, do that without it looking kind of blurry and not quite right. Uh, but again, that's not really a big criticism on him. That, that's just a, an issue with the comic book, but hell, I'm going to point it out. I want to be fair here. But back to stuff as well. Let's go back to the layouts. Like I say, his stuff in uh, the Detective Batman was spectacular. I hope a lot of people like jumped onto stuff as a result of that, and they would not be disappointed by this. If for no other reason, then he does a really, really good thing of moving time by showing differences in art and using layout. There's one where we just get this huge landscape with panels and panels showing people moving throughout it with dialogue following them along. It's brilliant because it doesn't flow in the traditional way, but it also flows completely naturally. You know exactly where you're supposed to be reading in what order to show that time has passed. Another fantastic bit with just three vertical uh, panels as they're moving through a landscape and the thing that's far away gets closer to them. Really, really nice. Some subtle, some not, but just fantastic ways of working with his creator. Because the writer on this one, Zach Thompson, um... I'm a fan of hips. Um, I think you've probably heard me talk about him recently in Cemetery Kids Don't Die, which is fantastic. I'm absolutely heartbroken that the UK did not send us any copies of issue three, and they've run out now, so I have to wait until they do a trade payback before I can read the story, which is annoying, because I really did enjoy it. But more than that, responsible with Lonnie Nadler for Undone by Blood, one of my all-time favourite comic books. I like it so much, I kept going on about it so much, that I got sent from the United States to this country a set of signed copies of them because they were like, man, this guy likes this, this much. That's how much I like this guy's writing. And one of the things I like about his writing is the interplay with form that he does really, really well with Hayden Sherman. Um, to people who clearly understand the medium they're working in and know how to get the absolute best from it. In terms of actual writing as well, there's fantastic characters. The plot is really good. It's set in this like mid-apocalyptic but future kind of thing. And we deal with a climate apocalypse. And this is a, to be honest, a kind of go-to thing at the moment, because let's face it, we're living through one right now. And it's what sci-fi does really effectively. It takes real-world problems, puts them in the future a little bit so it can show how bad they're going to get. But none of this is the pure fiction made-up kind of stuff. I mean, yes, there is some pure fiction. If you read the comic book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's what science fiction should do best, which is shine a light on real-world problems. Not just that, but we also have one of the main characters involved in this one is an anarchist working for a corporation trying to solve the problem. And I like the fact that they're an anarchist working for a corporation which they don't trust at all because people with the money are never going to solve these kind of problems, not in a way that's going to be good for everybody. And if you say otherwise, I think you're probably a bit naive. Zach Thompson is not that naive. He nailed it absolutely. Although, if I'm going to criticise a little bit of the artwork or at least a bit of the layout thing, I also have to say that's not how you spell trivial. 
It's just incorrect. Might be a typo. I don't know. Might be an editing issue, but that's not how you spell it. Uh, that's it. That's my review. Um, it's fantastic. Go check it out. Um, I managed to get this entire review without telling you any of the plot. That's a good thing. Read it. Uh, until I see you all again, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.